Hello, my name is Megan McBride, and today I will be interviewing Nancy Sharples, a local weaving teacher. Hi, Nancy. Could you please introduce yourself? Hi, Megan. Yes, my name is Nancy Sharples, and I've been teaching weaving in this area, the Capital District, for about 40 years now. I taught many years ago at the College of St. Rose, and then did arts and education projects in the um, public schools. And now for the past about 20 years, I've been teaching at the local arts center in here in Saratoga Springs. 40 years, that's a, a really wonderful long career in weaving. Can you tell me how you got started weaving? Um, it's kind of funny. I was working in advertising doing graphic design and thought maybe I would like to become an art teacher. So it meant I needed to apply to graduate schools. And in doing that, I thought I should round out my, my uh, portfolio that I'm presenting to these schools. So I took a weaving class and it was like coming home. I knew from the time I started that this was what I wanted to do. So I ended up going to Rhode Island School of Design for a master's degree in te both teaching and weaving. And I've been doing that ever since. Oh, that's great. Um, so how did you get started teaching at the Saratoga Arts Center? When the community started the Arts Center, um, the woman who was head of the program then, Dee Sarno, asked if I would come and teach. She knew I had been doing programs in the public schools. Um, and so I said, that'd be great. So we managed to get enough looms. We have 10 looms and, um, and it's really at the moment, it's the only weaving studio in the area that's constantly running for teaching programs. Um, you can see there in the photo, some of the looms and a lot of yarn and a lot of samples hanging up. We have a very devoted uh, group of people who come to classes and actually in the last few years, we have a waiting list now. And uh, we're hoping to get more people in as time goes on, but right now is not when that's gonna happen, <laughs> as you know. That, uh, this studio just looks like heaven to me. It's, it looks so wonderful and just like the kind of place where you could really let your creative juices run wild. It is, it's very inviting. And the thing that's interesting about it too is as people are learning to weave, they get to know each other. And I joke with them that it's also therapy sessions because <laughs> people come in and their, their lives are busy and hectic and sometimes chaotic. And when they're sitting and weaving and focusing on a project, they really have to concentrate on what they're doing. And so all those issues in their real lives kind of uh, go out the window. It's, it's been fun over the years to see how the weaving helps people, really. What do you like best about teaching weaving? Um, the thing that's always fun is people frequently come in with no background at all in weaving and they don't realize the complexity of what they're gonna be doing. Mm -hmm. And there's always that aha moment when somebody finally figures out how the loom works and what it's doing. And I used to teach both graduates and undergraduates and my undergraduate students were always very cool about this whole thing. And the graduate students would just get so excited about what the loom could do. And then once you learn the basics, the possibilities are infinite in terms of what you can then produce. It's a matter of taking the yarn and figuring out what it's gonna become. So that's, that's always fun. Um, given the current pandemic, um, what is the situation with regards to classes at the Saratoga Arts Center? Um, for the time being, everything has to be virtual. Over the summer, they did some outdoors, outdoor classes, which was great. But um, right now, we cannot have students coming in in the closed environment of the building. So we're trying to come up with new ways to teach online and new courses. Um, in the ca my case, that means I've come up with an idea to do a tapestry weaving class that could be done in several short workshop periods where you're just using a small frame loom like this. It's just got warp strings on it. And then you can create designs. Um, this is a very different kind of one, depending on your color aesthetic and uh, what shapes you want to try and make. 
Um, this will be a basic course for people who haven't done any weaving before, and it's a nice introduction. The loom can do a lot for you, but this is the other side of traditional tapestry weaving, and you find it all over the world. You find it in Navajo rugs and medieval tapestries, those wonderful pieces that hung up in castles and that are now mostly in museums. Um, the kinds of kilim rugs that are from the mid Middle East and just if you find tapestries woven all around the world. So it's fun to do that and just work on a small project. And then if people enjoy it, then we can talk about making a larger loom and working in more um, detail. Um, given that there are currently some challenges for in-person teaching, uh, what resources would you recommend for people who are interested in uh, wanting to get started weaving? It's usually best to take a class, but since that's not possible right now, there are wonderful videos out there that you can find. One that one of my students has been using a lot is JanetStaffordTextiles.com. And you can become a member of a class through that, or you can use some of the videos without joining a class. So that's one good way. The other thing is there's so many good books that um, that's a possibility too. But most everything now you can Google how to warp a loom and, and a whole range of things will come up. So that's probably the easiest way at this point is to find something that suits your needs online. So can you talk a little bit about the different types of looms that are available and what it might cost to get, start, uh, get started weaving? Okay, the, um, good question, because it can be very expensive, but it doesn't need to be. One of the nice things about doing this small tapestry class is that the materials for that are very inexpensive and you can make your own loom, one that's uh, much larger than the sample loom that I showed you. Um, you can work with, stretch your frames and build your own loom with nails and then work very intricately on with just that as, as your loom. From there you go to table looms and floor looms and on up to um, computerized systems that have um, many, many mechanisms to change the thread, threading structure, etc. on the loom. But it's not necessary to start out with something enormous. Usually in my classes, what I recommend is that people take several courses in sequence and figure out what they themselves would like to weave. If you find you want to weave scarves and that's all you want to weave, then you don't need a loom that's 45 inches wide and sings and tap dances. So um, it really depends what you're purpose of the weaving is. If you want to make rugs, then obviously you're going to need a heavier loom that will hold up under the tremendous pressure and beating that a rug demands. So there's a lot out there. One of the things that's wonderful about our weaving guild is we have a monthly newsletter where people can list any weaving materials that they would like to sell. And frequently there are used looms. Looms don't deteriorate over time. They're strong machines. And so buying a used loom is usually the best way um, if you're starting out in weaving to get something small and make sure you're going to stick with it. I encourage my students if they have a loom and they're weaving something to wind a warp for the next project before they take the piece off that they're working on because it's it's intriguing how frequently people will finish a project and then it takes you know, it's climbing the next mountain. They have to figure out what they're going to do. And if you have that warp ready to go, you take one piece off and boom, you're already starting on the new work. So that's generally what I, what I do and what I recommend. I'm glad you mentioned the guild. Um, you are a past president of the Hudson Mohawk Weavers Guild. Um, can you talk a little bit about the guild and their activities and what they have to offer members? The thing that's wonderful about the Guild, there's about currently about 150 members in the Capital Region and beyond. And the thing that's amazing is the breadth of knowledge that the members have. People have been weaving for many, many years. Some are brand new weavers, but we always have show and tell at each of our meetings so that you can see what people are doing and it's really inspiring. We have programs where outside speakers come in and 
either present an on loom program or give lectures to us. So there's always ways to learn. We also have obviously the huge show and sale in November, which this year is virtual. We'll hope that goes well. But um, it's a gathering place for people who are who love to work with fiber and the breadth and depth of the knowledge that people have is really amazing. So that's that's been fun. Even though I've been teaching all these years, there are still many weavers in the group whose work just astonishes me. It's not work <laughs> that I'm gonna do. I, I uh, don't want computers to be involved in my weaving, <laughs> but those who do are fabulous at it. So it's really neat. That's one of the things I like about weaving is I feel that no long, uh, no matter how long you uh, study it, there's always more to learn. Oh, it's, it's incredible. And one of the best things for me about weaving is you have raw materials that you use and you need to make decisions in the beginning about what you're gonna create and what patterns you're gonna use or not patterns and colors and design and all of that. And even after weaving for as many years as I have, because of the structure of the loom, you can't see the whole piece while you're working on it. Um, so when it comes off the loom, you pretty much know what it looks like, but it, there's always that element of surprise there that you think, oh, well, that's balanced better than I had thought it might be or, you know, whatever. But it, it's constantly a surprise and, and fun to see what it is that you've made. You mentioned show and tell, and that is one of my favorite parts of guild meetings. Um, and I wanted to show a couple pieces of your work and have you talk to us about them. So let me just pull those up. Uh, this is a block weave rug. I have a couple of looms in the house and two of them are very heavy, sturdy looms. And I enjoy uh, playing with color and working out designs that will be you know, useful items, but also aesthetically pleasing and, and um, different than what you would find in a store. I can go to 45 inches wide and as long as I want, and that's, that does limit what I can do, but, um, but it's, it's fun. It's very slow. It's very time consuming, but I do enjoy doing it and then having something. That's a detail of the same piece. Can you tell me about the fiber? The uh, warp, or the threads that go on the loom are, is a heavy cotton twine. And then all that you're seeing here is the weft, the threads that go back and forth across and through the warp. And that's all 100% wool, it's rug wool. And it's quite thick and sturdy. And I have hand woven rugs all around my house, which is great fun. So, oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. And then lately I've been doing a lot of raw silk scarves. Um, again, I have many, many different colors and sometimes I'll dye the yarn to get new shades and values of, of colors. And this is just one sample of many raw silk scarves. They soften up as, you, actually I'm wearing one, they soften up as you use them and they're really delicious to, and fun to weave and fun to wear. And I like throwing in, you can see little flecks of colors, specks throughout there. You can throw in exotic yarns within the silk or other fibers that you're using um, to make it a little more um, fun. I do like all those little flecks of color. What do you most enjoy about weaving? Um, it's interesting, there's a rhythm to it and a, um, meditative part, when you're weaving, um, you have to pay attention to what you're doing, obviously, but it's also a, a place to calm down and, and quiet yourself as long as threads aren't breaking. Um, and so that's why I think I continue to enjoy the process. And I'm always, as I said earlier, eager to see the end results. Um, somebody was talking at the beginning of the pandemic that this is what weavers have been training for all our lives. And one of the thing that gives me great pleasure is thinking about all the people that I've taught over the years who now have looms 
and who came to this situation that we're in and were able to say, oh, I can weave now and had time and patience and the ability to sit down and just make wonderful work in the midst of this crazy time that we're living in. So that, that really has been nice for me to think about how, how this has helped so many people along the way. Thank you, Nancy. This has been a very enjoyable conversation. Thanks so much. Bye.